as part of the How Well Do Luxury Cars 8 series. The next one up is an absolute awe-inspiring car. It is a marriage of a world-class sports car with the comfort of a luxury sedan, the Jaguar XF. I'd like to consider it extremely fierce. This car is a perfect fusion of style as well as technology. And the vents open up, unveiling the AC. And we're going to be finding out what has really put this car right on the front list of fast running vehicles. Hulking engine that produces 270 horses by taking you for a swift drive. All the way to the red line, the diesel. This is a V6. That's what I'm talking about. The engine just growls. You can feel the animal in this car. We're going to be finding all that out. As we move into the front of the vehicle, you've got these lovely flowing lines diving nose down into the mesh grill out here, giving the car a stance as though it's all set to plant and attack anything that comes in its way. Muscular is the word, and that's exactly how it's built up. Along the side, the design is totally clean. Not a single line that runs across it. It's just simply elegance. Around the back, You've got these tail lamps that have been sliced through with this chrome strip that runs across the boot. The rear bumper at the end here has these really chunky bulges that jut out, diffuse her up to the exhaust right at the bottom. The exhaust openings down here are actually shut and you find the real opening underneath it, right down there. And that's the same pattern that flows along for this exhaust out here as well. Inside the boot of the XF, You've got a decent amount of space in here and a full-size spare wheel in there, 17 inches is what it is. Front seats are foldable in the 60-40 split. We'll show you that later. To shut the boot, you simply just dink it down that way and the motor inside does its job. The roof of the vehicle slopes sleekly down into the boot. It's pretty much coupe-esque and I really wonder how much of headroom is going to be once we get in the back seat. The fender out here is pretty much bulky. That's the entire design language. You've got a fake air vent that comes out here. Nothing's opening on this side. The headlamps out here are these bifunction xenons that sense oncoming traffic and switch from high to low beam accordingly. LED daytime running lights in the shape of a horn wrap around them. Washers down here too. There's a lot of aerodynamic modeling done around this vehicle out here. The air intakes out here are totally real. They open up right around the back. The wheel wells are fairly deep enough. 17 inches are what these wheels are. They do aggressively stand out though. Underneath the hood, we've got a 3 liter V6 hulking engine that produces 270 horses and 600, a colossal 600 Newton meters of torque. Everything is so enclosed and all this plastic stuff, but what's really inside is a monster. It's just so brutal. We're all set now to get into the Jaguar. Before we do that, just take a look at this key out here. It's a chunky piece. You've got your light switch here. You've got your hazard light switch here. Boot opener as well as the lock and unlock buttons. Getting into the vehicle, what you find is both the seats in the front are electrically adjustable. You've got your memory function button out there. Light switch out here for your fog lamps, as well as the boot opening button. The materials inside are all soft touch, lovely leather finish along the dash, aluminum insert out here, real wood veneers that run all across the cabin's dashboard, inside the center console, the door panels on my side as well. Totally encapsuled in luxury. Storage spaces wise, the glove region opens with a click of the button. Two one liter bottles maximum is what would fit in there. Inside the door bins, I can't see more than half a liter bottles fitting in there. They're not that huge. Inside the center console here, veneer wraps it all up. Got a nice little storage in here wrapped in veneer. Click of a button, it just pops open. Nice cup holders for a change. I get a C. 12 volt charging socket in there as well. Inside the armrest region, you've got a 12 volt charging socket, a USB as well as an aux input. Decently spaced up along the center console, aside from this lovely gear lever as well as this pulsating red start button. 
you got your traction control on off switch out here you've got a race mode button out there as well as an automatic speed limiter button inside the visors you've got vanity mirrors with lights the moment you open them they show up on each side that's for both sides the sunroof opens up with a click of this button here single click it goes back with the shade if i want to bring it back i just simply press this once again but the shade has to be pulled back manually you got a rear shade button out here. That's the only shade at the back. So with this press, the rear shade opens up. Your parking sensor button as well is out here if you want to turn it on or off. You got a seven-inch touchscreen infotainment system right up here. The touch controls though are pretty decent. It's kind of responsive. At times you wouldn't feel that. Ten speakers producing 400 watts of whopping power. Press down here, and you'll notice it's just going to change up in the screen. There's no display whatsoever or any kind of indication other than the screen. For the AC temperature, want to increase the fan speed, even that shows up right out there. When you put off the AC though, this is the real party piece. The vents just simply roll down like that. And you click it again, and the vents open up. Navigation. The touch response of the navigation is very laggy, and I wouldn't consider it the best at all. Go into mode now. TV receptor out here. You got your audio visuals if you want to connect you got a 6 cd changer get back out of it we have our lock unlock buttons power switch for the infotainment system out here your hazard indicator navigation your phone menu yes if you have your phone connected it's totally going to show up there then your main menu is right out here in a setup i can see my trip details from the trip computer i can reset anything some settings the screen you can set a screen saver if you wish to you can actually set the jaguar or the leaper or just simply a clock that'll show up here when you're not using it you're driving i personally like this one though the image of the jag i can actually clear warnings and it's all set up from the screen out here this is the actual hub engaging the reverse gear gives you dynamic guidelines of the camera on screen however there's no 360 camera view and it's only this one up to the bumper one of the cooler features of the infotainment system is this valet mode right up here you click that and it actually lets you set a valet pin so when you give your car to a valet he cannot access the infotainment system or any other details that are stored inside your car. You've got a three-spoke butch looking steering wheel. Audio controls line up on this side with a voice control system as well. This is totally for your audio control and they're jerky motion. It doesn't roll completely, it just jerks forward and backward. Your mode is for switching it into Bluetooth or the radio system or the CD changer. On this side you have your cruise control which is adaptive with the resume and cancel switch. The paddle shifters at the back of it. The steering wheel also has an electrically adjustable rake as well as reach function. Moving into the driver's instrument cluster, you can see we have a clock that's lined up there and you've got this button out here on the stock stick that controls the information you wish to see out here. So from your average fuel consumption in the city, your average speed, your digital speed if you want to see it, then that's your trip detail again. It's totally fused up in blue. That's how the design is. It's like a glass lit finish all around the dials. So behind the steering wheel here, you've got the stock stick that houses your light controls for the headlamps, trip settings, you've got your button that controls the onboard computer. On this side you have your washer switch as well as your wiper settings if you want it on auto or not. Your door lock simply open just like that. In the back seat of the XF my head is almost touching so anyone above 510 is going to find it difficult here in the back. Huge transmission hump here, three at the back would totally be difficult to consider. Seat comfort wise, it's really comfy and really padded up. Can't miss anything out. Just a couple of cup holders inside here, nothing else. Lovely veneer finishing along the door panels here at the back. Some nice stitched up leatherette. A speaker up there as well as down there. Got a little bit of storage space here in the door. Good enough for a half litre bottle max. Aluminum graces it all around. No sunshade though. My leg room is decent, the seat is set to my position, both the front seats are. Netted storage out here, boss button to move this passenger seat in the front. A couple of air vents with a 12 volt charging socket, but there's no temperature control so you cannot adjust that, you're going to have to live with whatever has been put in the front. All set to take the Jag to the tarmac, the pulsating red start button is blinking away, it's wrapped up in chrome that's glinting in my eyes, so keep it pressed. And the Jaguar aluminum drive selector just rises up from its surface. 
The air vents open up as the engine has begun to roar. Simply just turn this around in a D and we're set to make a move. I have so much power at my disposal right now to put it to that good and hard fitting test. This car is huge. That's the stature. Tones, suspension is good enough. Five years down, no work done on it whatsoever. And it just simply lets me throw it, push it in the corners however, whenever I want to. As you can feel it just surges. 600 Newton meters that I can feel right at 2000 RPM. This is the XF. Visibility all around is decent. The eight pillars are narrow. My rear view mirrors are decent as well. Rear glass is kind of compact, not that big enough. And yeah, the moment it's out here on the road, heads turn. 12 kilometers to the leader in this diesel V6. Isn't all that bad in city terms. Ground clearance, it touches. It's not that good. Kind of expected though, the car is sitting low. I just feel that the car begins to lift off the ground. Dynamic stability control systems are in play here. That makes the steering way up at higher speeds. Suspension is so solid and it just, it just lifts off the moment you put your foot on the pedal. It just doesn't want to wait. We're going to dip it in a sport mode right now. As well as turn on the race setting. And we are in a dynamic mode confirmed. That's what it's called by Jaguar. And it just simply rages. All the way to the red line, the diesel. This is a V6. That's what I'm talking about. The engine just growls. You can feel the animal in this car. Eight gears at my disposal. And it just simply performs. If you can take a better look out here, you can actually see that it's indicating so loud and wide what gear I'm shifting in right now. Oh God, it just knows how to go. And it's braking is on point as well. Oh, all right, it's so a race mode. You've got to switch up the gears yourself using paddle shifters. That's how you control it. All the way to the red line. It takes my breath away leaves me with no words. This is the Jaguar XF. Eight gears to play with. What more could I desire? This car is the ultimate package. You have all the power you could possibly need under this bonnet and at the press of this pedal. It delivers handsomely. V6 all the way, but even in drive, I can just coast away, all the way through. Zero to 100 in this vehicle does clock up in around about six and a half to 6.8 seconds. And that is mighty fast. Leaving dust behind is all what it knows how to do best. I mean, you, you don't buy this vehicle now, of course, just to sit in the back seat, enjoy its comfort, luxury. This is absolute driving glory. We just simply put it down it just glides. There is a bit of oversteer in the vehicle. I just don't feel scared, man. I mean, I can push it however fast I want and I know it's just gonna go. The suspension just simply balances out bumps, portholes, and then it just simply stiffens up when you put your foot down on the pedal. This is totally a diesel haven. That's what this car is. So the Jag YXF, at the end of it, five years later as well, it's still got all that punch in its engine delivers whenever you want it to deliver. 600 Newton meters of torque, 271 horses. Hearing those figures itself, you feel this kind of amplification of driving glory. When you sit in that driver's seat, you can feel it, every bit of it. It makes your hair stand. It makes head stern outside as well when passers walk by it. I totally feel that this car is the one that you want in your garage if you haven't got something quick enough. This is just simply... It just makes me just rush inside the Jaguar XF. Uh, 